Did you know that the average human attention span decreased by almost 25% from 2000 to 2015? To 2015. And 2015 was before TikTok. The attention span of the average human is now 8.25 seconds. We have a shorter attention span than goldfish. Goldfish can concentrate for nine seconds. I actually used this as an intro to an essay that I wrote, but I thought it could be applied to dance as well because I'm a choreographer and I was watching some of my old dance videos when I was training and I thought, damn, this choreography was really slow. And it had nothing to do with the style or the studio that I was at or anything other than it was back then and dancing just used to be slow and more well paced and we didn't hit every beat of the music. Well, now with TikTok and social media, everyone's attention span is shortening and you'll notice that if you're a a teacher or a choreographer, you may notice that you choreograph faster now or hit every beat of the music. It's kind of a trend. Um... And just in general, like it's hard to hold, it's hard to hold something or slow down with your choreography. And you also may notice if you're a dancer that taking class, it's harder to focus. It's harder to pay attention in class. It's harder to get through the whole class without having your own brain interrupt yourself and everything. So today the episode is about picking up choreography and how to pick up choreography. But also before we even get into, um, I'm going to give you guys basically just some tips to pick up choreography better. Um, because I'm a teacher and I know how to, now I know what to tell my students in order to help them pick up choreography because I learned from my experience, um, training as a dancer, how to pick up really fast choreography. Um, I've trained under a lot of teachers that teach fast. And I can confidently say that I can walk into a class and almost 100% of the time get the combo if I really nail it down and focus using these tips. Um, So I'm definitely, I'm going to give us some tips at the end. Um, And we're going to dive into what makes it hard to pick up choreography. But first, I want to talk about my own personal experience and how I used to tell myself growing up dancing that I could not pick up choreography. And that was like the thing I would repeat in my head. Um, That was like my number one thing, my number one correction to myself, really. And that my shoulders were up. I would always get that correction. My shoulders would be up, which I still have carry tension in my neck. Anyway, getting a little distracted. But that was a story that I used to tell myself um, that I could not pick up choreography fast at all. Um, It had to do a lot with I started dancing late, so everything was unfamiliar to me really with dance. And I think so for a while it was true that I struggled a lot to pick up choreography, but way past the time that I actually learned how to pick up choreography efficiently, I was still telling myself that story in my head and I still let it hold me back for a while. Um, And I didn't know anything about musicality or muscle memory and stuff like that, specifically methods where and tools where I could pick up choreography. Um, And it really has a lot to do with your mentality, but there are some outside factors too um, and some factors that you can control. So I'm really excited to talk about it in class. Um, So our attention span as human beings has decreased and we can see it in the arts and we can see it in dance especially. So I, as a choreographer, like I said, I'm creating way faster combos, like even subconsciously, not even until I realized I wanted to do this episode, did I realize that. And I've noticed that when I train to and take classes and some of my students, I'll notice in them, it's so hard to focus for them And for me, when I'm taking class, it's so hard to pay attention the entire time to the teacher. Um, But that's just that's just what's happening. We're just evolving and changing as species. So we can't identify with that in a negative way. What we can do is do our best to um, roll with it. And (laughs) I like to think limitations aren't limitations. They're modifications and they're opening new doors to something something that's better. That's what I like to think of. So 
we're getting better because of these things that we're learning. But as a choreographer, before we get into the tips for training, I just want to talk about how I've started to implement my awareness of this and I've kind of started to backtrack because if you think about it um, like a trend, all the dances are fast. The choreography is super fast. If you're my student, you know my choreography is fast and um, I love it. It feels good to hit every beat. Like it's addicting almost. But at the same time, it can be a lot if you don't pause to breathe. So that's something I'm personally working on with myself right now as a choreographer. But what I've started to realize that my responsibility now is to give my dancers a chance to breathe. Like, yes, you may be able to hit every single eight count for all of your solo, but the second half of your solo, are you going to look like you're dead or are you going to look like you're dancing and performing (laughs) is what I have to think about. So no matter how good of a dancer you are, you still have to pace yourself. And that goes for competitive dance and professional and just training or recreational. So as a choreographer, a way I've started to kind of backtrack with this is I will have moments in my pieces where the dance is faster. It's a lot faster. Maybe I'll hit like a one e and a two and a, but then I'll breathe for the whole three, four, five, six, seven, hit the and eight or something like that. Like just choices like that. And that takes, in, instead of everything just being so chaotic, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air. Um, so if you're a choreographer out there, I invite you to explore that and see if it's something that, you feel like adds a new dynamic to your pieces. But let's get into the important part, why we're all really here. How the hell do you pick up choreography that is 5,000 miles per hour in a style that you're maybe not super comfortable in and you're having a shit day? (laughs) How do we do that? Um, First of all, we all have bad days. So sometimes that's just inevitable. I drove to Orlando last night to take a class, take my friend's class. I was looking forward to all day and I got there and I said, shit, I am so tired. But this wasn't just physical tired. Physical tired, you can push through, right? Mental exhaustion, you're fighting your mind the whole time. So my friend's amazing class that I was so excited for, um, I was fighting my mind the entire time. But what I did right away was I accepted it. I said, okay, I'm tired today. I'm maybe not in the best mindset, but that doesn't mean I'm going to give up completely or this is a waste. Like I'm going to do as best as I can do with the circumstances that are today. And by the end of that class, I felt better, believe it or not. It was, I was really tired from my hour long drive home, (laughs) but I felt better. So the first thing is honestly is mindset it's a mental thing picking up choreography is it's mental there's physical things you can do to help but it starts in your mind so you need to talk yourself up before class and you need to kind of have a conversation with yourself and check in and be like how am I doing today what am I what am are my goals like if you have a second you need to just address your state in your mind and decide that no matter how you're feeling, you're still going to do the best and you're not going to use that as an excuse to give up. Because giving up is fine and resting is good, but if you're going to go to class, you need to at least try. <laughs> you know, they say like show just all you have to do is show up, but all you have to do is show up in the right mindset is is really what what matters. So even if you're feeling like your battery percent is at like a 25% today, then you're going to be like, okay, well, I'm going to dance at 25%. I'm not going to dance at 24%. It doesn't get worse. It's only going to get better. So positive mindset is a big deal. And I, I am not a mental health professional, although I have dealt with mental health issues uh, upon occasion. Like, I don't want to go into that too much. We'll dive into that in the other episodes, but sometimes it's out of your control too. So if you feel like it's out of your control, definitely seek professional help um, and take my advice with your own opinions and agree with what you want. But if, if you can get yourself in a positive mindset in the beginning of class, then you're setting yourself up for success. Um, so here's some tools 
while you're in class. One is definitely presence. Um, and by presence, I mean you have to redirect your thoughts to be in the present moment. So this is my little spiritual woohoo tip that we're starting off with. Um, but use your breath to anchor yourself to the present moment in class. So what I mean by that is if the teacher gives you the first eight count and you're like, holy shit, I'm not going to get this. It's so fast, right? Which is a thought that I feel like a lot of people have. I've had that before, but luckily I've trained my brain to where I don't get that thought anymore. I just think, okay, that's really fast, but I know what to do now. So you have to, you have to trust yourself. You really have to trust yourself. Um, So if you start to feel overwhelmed, just take a deep breath and use that throughout the entire class to anchor yourself back to the present moment. Don't be thinking about what you're going to do when class is over. Don't be thinking about what happened to you all day. And of course, I say this like, don't be thinking about it, but those thoughts are going to pop in your head no matter what. It's about how you react to them. So what I like to do, instead of grabbing onto a thought like that, I'll just take a deep breath and I'll think, all right, well, I'm here now and I'm lucky to be here now. I'm grateful to be taking class. Um, and that's kind of how my brain works now. It works like that rather than bringing up so much negativity. Um, with repetition, you can get your brain to work like that too, ladies and gents. <laughs> so... Um, Next up, into the actual choreography. The first time the teacher does something, do not move. Watch so you don't miss anything. So when I'm teaching, and I try to remind my kids of this, but I notice that especially like, say I go to the floor. I'll do a floor work section where it's a lot of rolling, where your head moves around, and you can't keep your focus forward. When I teach that for the first time, some of my kids will roll on the floor with me but they'll do it wrong because they can't see me. They don't know they don't know what's happening because they're not looking. But the people that get the role eventually are the ones that are standing and watching the first time. So I promise you, you will get this. You are going to get the choreography. You don't have to do it right away, but what you need to do is you need to watch first. So watch as the teacher does something. And I mean full out. As the teacher is teaching, definitely go through it with your body but when the teacher does something full out like a trick or a roll or something unfamiliar to you um watch and if you forget about this just raise your hand and say hey would you mind doing that again and no teacher unless you're like in a toxic studio is going to be like why weren't you looking the first time the teacher is going to be like of course i can do that again okay apologies my camera died i'm still working with an older camera and Go ahead and rate this podcast and give it a thumbs up if you want me to be able to afford a new camera. Thank you. Um, Anyway, so where do we leave off? Um, Oh, we were talking about um, when the teacher starts the combo. Don't move. Watch it the first time. Watch everything the first time a teacher demonstrates it because you don't want to miss any part of the choreo while you're turning around or if there's direction change and you're practicing that with the teacher you miss something new then you waste more time trying to catch up on that when you could be learning the rest of the choreo and it kind of creates like a loop that you just get behind on Um, another thing I wanted to mention before I continue on that I totally forgot to say in the beginning is there's one simple trick to picking up choreography that is just dumb obvious and well I guess not dumb obvious but it's more just like it's just a fact The more you train, the faster you're going to pick up choreo because let's face it, the more you do something actively with a positive mindset, the better you're going to get at it. So the more you can expose yourself to drop in classes, combo classes, choreography classes, the faster you're going to be able to pick up choreography because you're going to grow more comfortable with being uncomfortable in that. Yeah, soon if you train consistently Um, if that's an option that's available for you, then you will become better at picking up choreography too, not just better at dancing in general. Um, so another thing, the more you're exposed to something that's above your level, the more you will advance once again with the right mindset. So instead of thinking this class is too hard for me, think if I push through, I'm going to be so much better because of what I can learn from this class. Yeah really just goes back to mindset shifts and changing your mindset and working on your mindset. 
Same thing goes with the first time a teacher shows something with music. Um, do not move. When a teacher first tries the combo with music, do not move because this is the only chance you get to absorb um, the choreography based off the musicality. You need to be focusing on the musicality first when you're training because if you think of it like this, the music is literally like your bridge across the river to get to the other side, which the other side is doing the combo and feeling confident. So you can either either use the bridge and just walk across or you can swim through the treacherous waters, <laughs> which would be not listening to the music and just going for it. Um, choreographers build combos based off music. So if you're not prioritizing the musicality, and by that I mean what, what are the counts? Um, that's funny of me to say. I'm not very pro count. I always feel like counts are... Um, <sighs> What's the word I'm looking for? You have the music and then you have your body. And I feel like sometimes counts are interference or they're blocking like a filter through the channel. So you, and this is not always true. Obviously for certain styles, counts are necessary and beneficial. But for my style that I teach, mostly contemporary fusion, I feel like the counts interfere with my direct interpretation of the music if I try to um, dissect them into counts because I'm hitting such specific tiny beats and little noises and breaths that would be on such a e and account that it's almost not even a count if you know what I mean so <laughs> um so focus on the sounds that the teacher or choreographer is accenting in their combo if you can hear it then you can do it yeah, if, if you can hear it, you can do it. It just takes a second for your ears to connect to your muscles, which is fine. But the more you hear it and and be aware of those certain accents, the more you're going to lock those pieces in like puzzle pieces to certain time frames in the combo and you're setting yourself up to succeed. Because even if you do mess up, which, which we're going to talk about next, um, even if you do mess up, you'll know right back when to start because the next accent is on this crash or the next accent is on this drum beat or whatever. Um, so musicality, I need to make a whole nother episode on musicality. Um, I could talk about musicality forever. Definitely one of the foundational things when it comes to my teaching or my classes, they're all very musicality based. So I'm going to have to do a whole nother episode on that. But Thinking of musicality, once again, like you can think of everything as not a challenge, but a tool. Um, so if you think, wow, this combo hits a lot of beats and I'm not familiar with the song, use the time to familiarize yourself with the song as good as you can get in this hour combo class, right? Like you're, you're not going to be as connected to the music as the teacher who's been listening to this for weeks and knows the combo better than you and probably practiced it a hundred times before they taught it, but you can get as good as you can get in that hour. So musicality and mindset. Yeah. Um, keep that mindset, maintain that positive mindset. Keep reminding yourself that you're just trying to do the best that you can in this short period of time and um, use that to your advantage. Yeah. So um, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Um, you need to, first of all, you need to give yourself permission to forget the combo. Because if you're so scared to even try, because you're scared to look stupid or you're scared to mess up, then you're you're going to be in like fight or flight the entire time. You'd be so self-conscious that you won't even be able to try. You're going to be basically paralyzed with fear. You need to give yourself permission to mess up in class. I'm tired of seeing all of these perfect class videos on like Instagram or TikTok with, without context. Now, I don't mean I'm tired of seeing amazing dance videos, but you guys have to realize that those people grew up training and taking classes where they probably looked terrible. They probably had teachers yelling at them to point their toes for like 10 years before they could even execute one move properly that's in that combo. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be scared to look bad. And this is mostly for my younger generation of dancers that are hearing this because you have to look bad a million times before you can get it right. But if you never try, you're never going to be able to reach that. Um, 
And oftentimes, too, if you give yourself permission to forget the combo, give yourself permission to mess up and go in with that mindset, you will often surprise yourself and actually pull through. I can remember so many times where this would happen to me. I'd be taking a really hard class and I'm just like, I know I don't have it, but I'm going to go out there and do the best I can. What happened? I did the whole combo because muscle memory is a thing and I was present the entire class paying attention and I got it. And I've had other times where I went out there, forgot the whole thing. But because I told myself it was okay prior to doing the combo, I was not mad at myself. I was like, okay, this is a safe environment. This is my class for me to learn. That's another thing too. Take your goddamn power back. You're paying for this dance class. You are paying for this dance class or your mom is paying for this dance class. I don't know your parents, but regardless, you could leave. You could literally walk out. Like it's just dance, it's not that serious. So why are you so anxious to mess up and to look bad? It's literally your class. You can do whatever you want to a certain degree. But you get what I'm saying, right? Um, And that mentality came to me a little bit later when I started taking classes and paying for my own drop-in classes. I was like, oh, I paid 15 bucks for this class. I didn't even have to be here if I didn't want to. Like, I can do whatever I want in this class. I could mark this whole class because I'm injured, which I've done so many times. I still wanted to train, but I was injured. I'm like, I'm going to go and I'm going to mark this class. It looked like I was doing the moves microscopically. But you know what? I was happy that I went. I was happy that I went. Did I do my best I could have ever danced? Absolutely not. But I was dancing, right? So we have to get out of this perfectionism mindset. That's funny coming from me. I'm such a perfectionist. I'm working on it, guys. I, I'm working on it. I'm even a perfectionist with this podcast. Yeah, I've refilmed this episode already, but I, I just, uh, you just have to give yourself permission to be imperfect. We're humans. We're never going to consistently be perfect. Um, so let's go back to the original order of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, another great thing to think about, this is something that's very encouraging. The beginning of the combo is what you're going to do the most. If you think about it, you learn the combo in the beginning and then you try that and you practice it a bunch. And then as you add on, you continue to try the beginning over and over with the additional choreography. So don't get caught up at the start of a combo. Yeah, just trust yourself. If you don't have the beginning of the combo, you will have it by the end of class. Just let it be. Trust your muscle memory. Ask questions if you need to. That's another thing, especially to hear the music again. I am always that person in class where I'm like, hey, can you do this part again with music, please? Because I didn't catch what accent that was on. And I'm not embarrassed. I'm so excited. And oftentimes people are like, thank you for asking that. Or someone else will ask a question. I'll be like, oh, thank God. I wanted to know that too, (laughs) you know? So don't be scared to ask questions, honestly. Teachers are there to teach. If a teacher has a problem with you asking a question, I mean, and if it obviously shouldn't be a stupid question, If you ask like, well, to a degree, if the person, if the teacher just shows the combo and the first step is on the right foot and you were able to watch that and see that, you shouldn't ask what foot do we start the combo with? I'm talking like actual questions. You know what I mean? If you can, if you can answer the question by watching the person do the combo, then maybe just ask the teacher to um, demonstrate one more time or something like that. But asking questions should never be something that you're ashamed of or you're scared to do in classes. I promise you, anytime I've taught and someone asks me a question, I'm so glad that they'll ask me Um, because I want to make sure that everyone is feeling confident in the choreography. Um, Here's a tip, side note, for competition dancers. Um, This is, I don't want to just talk about remembering choreography from classes. Um, I'm talking about remembering choreography that you have to compete or perform on stage. (laughs) So something I noticed in my dancers is first competition out, we can forget the choreography sometimes at my studio, but I think I know why this is. It's because we've been practicing the choreography in the same atmosphere. And what I mean by that is literally just the studio. The studio that has the same air temperature every week, the studio that has the same lighting, the studio that has the same people in it yelling at you, the same noises, the same fan, the same background noise, whatever. So 
if you're a competition dancer and you feel like you get on stage and everything is so different and you can't remember the choreography, even if you're not aware of this, it just feels different. You don't feel as confident as you are in the studio. You need to implement practicing your dances at home or in a space that's big enough to practice. I don't know. Go to the gym and practice. I, I do this. I go in the middle of the gym and I'll fucking dance full out. And people are like, oh, my God, are you a dancer? And I'm like, don't talk to me, you creepy old man. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but really, you need to. You need to change the atmosphere that you're practicing the choreography in. Because if you're if you're attaching the choreography to the atmosphere you learned it in, once you take that studio out of the equation, you get on stage, you may not remember the choreography. I mean, you may, but if you're someone that does struggle with forgetting choreography on stage, practicing at home, practicing at home as full out as possible with the space you have, move that furniture, tell everyone to be quiet, be like, mom, I need you to announce my number, entry number 44, a jar of hearts to the stage. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> but really, really practicing at home is so underrated. Um, I pra every single time I competed a routine, I had practiced it at home before. Yeah, I could not go on stage without practicing at home before because I didn't truly feel confident with it until I was alone in my house doing the choreography on my own. Oftentimes, too, it didn't come without its flaws. I would go home and I'd realize, shit, I don't know this dance. <laughs> I don't know it at all. Then I'd watch my video and I'd learn my part. I'd realize that I was watching... I don't know, freaking Sarah in the front corner the entire time that I was doing this section. So I don't know this section. And you realize what you need to learn on your own and what you need to teach yourself. And that way you're not dependent on other people or the atmosphere to be successful in remembering choreography on stage. Um, so back to training and taking class. And I guess this could be implemented on stage too. Um, realize that you just need to trust yourself. Honestly, it's, it's a certain degree of just trusting yourself. Trusting the practice that you put in is enough. Trusting that you were paying attention enough in class that your muscle memory works. You know what I mean? Like muscle memory is a real thing. I'm telling you, it's oftentimes you have the combo. It's just it's just your brain gets in the way, you know? So sometimes we just need to step out of that mentality and we just need to say okay whatever happens happens I trust that I'm as prepared as I can be and I'm just gonna go on and trust myself um so yeah I think that could be applied to both taking classes and performing on stage um another thing I like to do when I'm taking class I just randomly thought of this I didn't write it in my notes for this episode is when the teacher answers someone else's question, which is probably bad, or the teacher's going slow, or the teacher pauses, or the teacher goes to get water, or goes to uh, play the music, I go through the whole combo as fast as fucking possible. I'm like, zoop, 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 zoop. I'm that person that's just like doing it over and over and over to get it in my body because that's what I need. If I just stand there and wait while the teacher is going to play the music or grabbing water or correcting someone else, like I'm wasting time. I go over the combo as much as possible in class. That way my brain is actively just like immersed in it. Yeah, I'm not just standing there thinking about the next day and I'm not just staring at myself in the mirror, which I do get caught up doing sometimes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. But <laughs> the way I said kidding did not sound like I'm kidding. No, but you know when you have a good outfit in class and you're just like, damn, that's another thing too. You better dress up for class. You better look good. Look good, feel good is so real. I could make another episode on that for dancers, but you got to go in class looking good. And then you will literally look good when you dance. Amen. So that's really all I have for this episode. But just remember that it is a learning experience. And the more you expose yourself to classes that challenge you, the better you're going to get at them, honestly. And I say that, experiencing that myself, I went and trained at a studio in Longwood and I had not had any sort of formal hip hop training. This was from like 21 to 22. Um, 
2021 to 22 and I was so uncomfortable with the style it was so unnatural for me but you know what I stuck at it and now I feel so much more confident when I take a hip-hop class Um, and I also teach hip-hop now so I really just I trained as much as possible it took a while but eventually I became comfortable so that's another thing too don't stay comfortable you step out of your comfort zone a, a little bit because that's the only way you can grow. And that's all I have to say for this episode. Super fun one. I love talking about choreography. I definitely want to do an episode on like my choreography process and um, how I get inspiration for like my competition pieces that I set and my combos that I teach. I think that'd be a fun one. But once again, I did say in the last episode, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify, Um, I don't even know what you do on Spotify. By the time this video is over and you guys see it, I'll obviously figure out how to post on Spotify, but I still don't really know what to do. So whatever you do on Spotify, just do that. Like, subscribe to the podcast or whatever. Um, Send me DMs with requests on what you want to see and what you want to hear and what you want to talk about. Um, So yeah, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And I love you so much. That's all I have to say today. Goodbye. Mwah!